Hey guys. Hey guys. Hoping everybody can hear me. Let's see if uh, everything's up and running. There we go. Okay, I think we are up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, hi, for everybody who doesn't know me, I am Carrie Story with Clay Revolution. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make some really simple earrings today. Uh, these are some examples of the little earrings that we're going to do. Let's get a clear shot of those. Okay. And I really love making these earrings mostly because they're such a quick and simple little project to do. They're definitely beginner metal clay project. And one of the things that's so nice about them is you can do all kinds of different styles, all kinds of different colors. It doesn't take a lot of equipment. Um, so it's a great beginner class, but it is also, for us experienced uh, metal clay artists, we can make these really quickly, throw them in the gallery, and make them for different seasons, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, these quick little guys. And you really only need a few tools and equipment for this, nothing super expensive. I'll probably use a few fun little things so you guys can uh, see some of the tools that you could get if you wanted to, but I think um, for the most part I'm going to stick with some really simple things today. So the first thing that you do need, <laughs> you do need some PMC. This is PMC 3. We're going to use about 15 grams today. You could also use PMC Flex. Um, any of the fine silver clays would work just fine with all of the things that we're going to do today. Okay. You need um, a little bit of water. This is a water mister. You need some release agent. This is uh, Liberation Spray. This is the one that we carry. Um, but you could use any silicone based release agent. Um, any olive oils will also work. Um, hi, Ellie. How are you? I hope you're feeling good. Um, I want, I'm going to catch up with you later on. <laughs> so, uh, you need a release agent. Olive oil will work just fine. Um, I just find that if you end up doing a lot of metal clay, I like to start to use the silicone release agents then because it doesn't build up on your tools. Um, you need a needle tool. I am going to use a very fine one. It's called a needle tool or an awl. Um, when you're cutting out stencils and things, you want to use a very fine needle on there. This is a fine awl, it's called. That way, and I'll show you this when we make our pieces, when you cut the clay out, it doesn't drag the clay around the texture. Okay, So you want a fine needle tool. Um, some depth measuring guides, a clay roller of some sort, you can use PVC pipe, anything like that will work just fine. Um, this one's a uh, silicone um, clay roller. You need something to cut a hole in the piece, I'll show you what I mean. Each one of these has a little hole in it. Most times you can use something like a coffee straw will work just fine. Um, my friends in California have been explaining to me that coffee straws are getting hard to find. <laughs> so these are little, um, oh, I should have left them in the bag so I can show you easier. These are just little mini cutters. They're really easy to get. We have them, like a set of them for a buck or two, I think. But it, this is about the size that you want to use for this. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit more too. Okay. Hi, Kim. <laughs> um, the 
texture of your choice. We are going to use these cool ones today. These are my favorites right now. Um, I, I honestly, I love textures. I have drawers full of textures, but these are easily becoming my favorites right now. Um, so we're going to use these guys. These are the Lincora mats. Um, and I'm using the one that's got the three different sizes on it, and you'll kind of see why. Okay. Um, you need some stencil that has, or cookie cutters will even work, that has different sizes of the same design on it. Okay. Um, let me go back to show you why. Let's grab the big set. If you notice these, it's the same shape in two different sizes okay so that's what we're going to try to do um, in our design we're going to recreate the same size i mean the same shape but the back piece will be plain and the front piece will have a texture on it okay so you want some some type of stencil or um, cookie cutters that are in different sizes okay what else do we need oh we're going to do some polishing tools, um, real simple stuff, a torch, a fire brick, um, and some patina. I think that's it. Probably some little odds and ends things, but that's, that's the majority of what you need. You don't need anything um, super expensive, um, and you can get away with a lot of the tools that you have at home for this. Okay, it takes about an hour to do the whole project. I'm going to do a little TV magic <laughs> and I have some pieces already done so that I can show you some other ways to do a few of the, the steps, okay? Let's see. So with that, does anybody have... <laughs> Thank you, Miss Laura. Anybody have any questions before I just jump right into how to do this? Okay, let me get my camera all situated, and I'm going to show you how to begin here. Let me move that back just a little bit, get some light on the subject. Okay, so... The first thing that we are going to do is decide that this is really important in medical clay. If you haven't done this before, before you ever get your clay out, you need to decide exactly what you're doing. What shapes, what textures, have all of your tools right in front of you, um, have your release agent, everything. Oh, I didn't talk about these. These are Teflon sheets. We're going to use these to roll on. Um, you want everything ready because metal clay dries very fast. So you definitely want to pre-plan your moves before you just get your clay out and try to start working with it. That will help you a lot, especially if you're a beginner. Okay. So our first step is going to be deciding which pieces we're going to cut. We are going to use these two sizes today, this one and this one. I'm going to make the back piece of the earring. Let me get another one of those samples out for you. I'm going to make the back piece of the earring, the larger one, with no texture. And I'm going to make the front piece of the earring, the smaller one, with texture. Okay? I'm going to make them different thicknesses as well. That's going to help um, reduce warping and things like that. Okay? So... The first piece that I'm going to make is my one with no texture. So let me show you how to do that. We are going to roll that piece three playing cards thick. Okay, these are depth measuring guides. And I certainly will, Laura. Remind for sure, um, remind me at the end if I don't do that. Uh, this is. A particular one and I'll have to look it up real quick um, okay do, do, do. let's see okay we're going to use I'm sorry I <laughs> got distracted see what happens okay I'm gonna get my clay out I've got my roller out I have my tool for cutting 
I have my stencil ready and I have my little coffee straw or mini cutter. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Get my clay out of my package. I like to knead these just a little tiny bit first so that I can make sure there's no um, folds or, or anything like that in it. Okay? There we go. Perfect shape. I'm going to roll this one three cards thick. I don't remember what the millimeter depth of that is at the moment, but the way that I'm doing this, see I'm trying to make it the clay as big as that shape. So I need to roll in different directions to do that. But the key is I have to keep the roller on top of these guides. If I were to do this, the clay would go all the way down to the thickness of the table at that point. So I need to keep them raised up on top of these to get this thickness of clay. Okay, So I'm kind of moving it around in different directions here to get that thickness. And I'm not pushing all the way down yet. I can always just turn this a little bit if I need to. Okay, And now I'm going to go ahead and push all the way down. Put my stencil on here, my template. And very vertically is the way that you want to hold this. If you hold this at an angle, you're going to be cutting an angle on the side wall. Okay? So I want to make sure that I hold my needle tool or my awl perfectly straight up and down. Trace around the outside. Lift that up. Get that little bit of clay off the edge of there. And before I lift all that excess clay up, I'm also going to put my hole in. The hole placement is really important. Okay, If you get the hole too close to the edge of the clay, it's going to break. What I'm talking about is, here's an example, this little area right here is very thin. So as your clay shrinks and shrinks away, it will want to break right there. So you want to make sure to get down at least an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the clay. Press straight down, lift straight up. Sometimes it comes with the cutter, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't come with the cutter, just leave it in there. It will dry right in place. Okay, You can pop it out very easily then. Then this is a nice little trick too. To pick that up, if you cut that stripe, then it's really easy to peel the clay from around the sides. Okay, that's all there was to that piece. Very simple. Put your clay away immediately so that it stays nice and damp. I'm going to put this on a little coffee straw and let it dry real quick. Okay, that'll take mm, five to ten minutes. I said a coffee straw. I meant a coffee warmer. Uh, Marsha, how do you know how much clay to take out? That's a good question, Marsha. When I do this particular project, and, and that is kind of a learning thing. As you go, you'll start to know how much clay you need for a particular size and, and depth. Um, for this project, I use half of my clay to do basically each roll. So I took half of my clay out to roll this one, half of the 15 gram pack. Okay. And then I'm going to take the other half and roll the next one. And then combine those and use about half of that. But those last two that I do, I will probably just use the whole chunk of clay that I have left sitting there. Okay. Any other questions on this step, anybody? Before I go to the next one? Okay. Now this one is the one that people tend to get a little more confused about. This is the texture step. Okay, I explain this one by telling people you need to think of a textured piece of clay as having two layers to it. Okay, There's a layer of solid clay and then there's a layer of texture on top of that clay. OK? 
okay? That's how I like to think of it. That helps me judge how deep I need to make the pieces. So, for this piece, we're going to do two playing cards thick of solid clay. And we're going to do two playing cards thick of texture. Okay? And I'm saying that very slowly because this is the part that confuses a lot of people. I do that by judging how strong I want the, the solid metal part to be. So the bottom, the solid metal part, okay, I want it to be two cards thick. These are earrings, so they can be pretty thin. Then, I also need to judge how much texture I want on top of it. This is a very deep mat, and I don't need to use all of the depth of it. This is about four cards deep, okay? And I can judge that by just putting my, my slat into the side of this and kind of just seeing that it's even, feeling that the depth of that is about the same as the depth of the mat. Okay, um, I don't want to use that much texture on the front of these earrings, so I'm only going to use two cards of texture on them. Okay, so what that means is I have two cards of clay, solid clay, two cards of texture. So I need a four card slab of clay to start with. Okay, so. I'm going to put some release agent into this size um, design on this one because I'm cutting such a small piece. What I did was just kind of see which one lays out better. Now I could use that one. That looks pretty cool itself. <laughs> and I could definitely use this one, but I really love the way that that one fits into it because I pick up all of that cool little swirl around the side of it. So I'm going to use this texture. Squirt a little of this into my hand, use a brush, put it deep down into that texture, okay? You want that to be, uh, I'll call it very oiled, but you don't want a pool of any release agent down in the texture, okay? That can distort your clay. Okay, so that's ready to go. This is ready to go. I've got my cutting tool ready to go. I've got my roller ready to go. And I am going to get my clay out. It's probably too much clay, but I want to show you how I push my clay together. So see how I knead this up in my fingertips here? Basically I'm just making sure all of the clay is melded together. There's a little bit right there. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of do a, a blend in my hand like that. Okay, going to roll this clay four cards deep. This is going to be my slab of clay. And again, I only need it to be about that big, so I don't need to worry about changing directions too much on this one. Just spread it out a little bit. Okay, push all the way down nice and firm. Now I have a four card slab of clay. I'm going to put this slab of clay on top of my texture. I'm going to put two cards next to it. Now what I just did was I'm rolling this clay now two cards thick. Okay, The excess two cards are going to go down into that texture. When I push this down on top of these slats, that excess clay will go down into the texture. Okay, So when you do the texture roll, you only get one roll. Because if you roll back and forth, you can ghost your image when your clay moves. So, 
To do the texture roll, I put my roller in the middle of the clay, I push all the way down and roll forward. I come back to the middle and pull back. Okay? Now, the way that I get this off of here is to kind of do a little sandwich technique. Flip this over. And pull that off. And oh, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to line it up. Cut it out. Oops. Let's just get rid of that. Find my hole cutter. This time I'm going to lift this up because all of that excess is distracting my ability to center this next hole. Okay. Pick up the excess clay, put that away immediately. And that's that. Okay. So, before, and I'm again, I'm going to put that on a little um, heated surface to dry. Um, and then I'm going to do my sanding. So before I skip to the next sanding step, does anybody have any questions about rolling the clay out with texture or any of that? Nope. Okie dokie. So on to the next step. So the magic of... Uh, TV here. We've got a nice beautiful dried piece. <laughs> so I'm going to refine this piece is what I'm going to do. Now most times these, you know, when you do the cutting, most of it is in pretty good shape. You usually don't have to do too much refining to it. Marsha, it's a good question. Um, it depends on your piece a little bit and it does depend on how you're drying it and what your environment is. Um, I, I would say on a coffee warmer, a piece like this is about 5 to 10 minutes, something like that, before you can handle it. You probably want to make it go 10 to 15 total before you fired it, but you could start um, handling it after about 5 to 10. Okay. So I'm going to use the um, sanding sponges today for this. I'm a big proponent of baby wipes, <laughs> just so you know. You can, uh, hi Kim, this is PMC3 that we're using today, okay? Um, and we're using 15 grams for this project. Normally with the baby wipes, I just wet them a little bit, wipe down my edges, and I'm done. And they're perfect. Um, but I wanted to show you a little more refined technique today because I usually don't uh, get to demonstrate this one too often. So these are sanding pads, and we're going to use them for a few steps today. So that's why I thought it'd be good to show you the refining with the sanding pads versus the baby wipe option. So when you're going to do your refining, you're going to go around your edges, and then I also like to take off the sharp edge of the, of the 90 degree angle, you'd say, okay? Because most of what we're making is jewelry. We, le we don't want it to be sharp or pointy or poke us. So that's why I take off those edges. So let me show you what I do. This one is the fine sanding pad. Um, and I find it use it works really well on, um, on silver clays. You might want to go up to, uh, I think it's called the medium. Uh, no, it's not the medium. Yeah, maybe it's called the medium. 
for uh, some of the base metals. But for the silver clay, this works for the um, initial sanding that we need to do. So I just gently pull it around the edges, okay? And we don't need to do a ton of work to this. I'm just looking for any weird spots, um, just trying to get everything nice and even. That's really it for that. Now I'm going to kind of go at it. See this angle that I'm doing here? I'm really just taking off any little sharp angles around that top. Okay. Now I'm going to sand the back. Now this is where I do spend more time, especially on you know a higher end piece that I really want to be very refined. I'm going to sand the entire back of this thing. Get it nice and flat. Okay. And then again, I'm going to take off that edge. And that's all there is to it. Okay. So after this, now we get to fire it. Okay. So let's see. Uh, what do we had? I heard the chicken fire. I heard. Heard the chicken fire the silver off the baby wipes. Is that true? Kim, can you Kim, can you rewrite that question for me? Okay. Do you have a favorite brand of baby wipes? Oh, Bonnie, I yeah. That is becoming more and more of a problem. <laughs> the baby wipes are getting fluffier and fluffier and they leave little um, hairs and fibers on your clay. So the cheapest possible option that you can find is really what works. Now the other thing that you can do is cleaning wipes if they're an all natural kind of cleaning wipe, nothing with a, a chemical in it, you know. Those tend to be a little bit stiffer and, because they're not meant for your skin. So sometimes those are a little bit less hairy. But usually I just look for the very cheapest thing I can find. And usually then they won't be quite so fluffy. <laughs> okay. Uh, next step. We are going to fire. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And get us set up for firing. Now I told you that you do need a few tools for this. Okay, and of course, I'm kind of faking my studio here because my studio has no internet at all. Um, so, <laughs> I have to kind of rig this little system for demonstration purposes. But, um, what I've got here is a fire brick, okay, this is... It's supposed to be silver nut chicken. <laughs> okay, I heard the silver fire the silver off the baby wipes. Is that true? Yeah, okay, Kim. Um, what you do is actually burn the baby wipes down. You'll be left with kind of a crumbly, gritty residue. That's actually the silver. And then you're going to put the silver in a crucible to melt it all the way down to the purer silver. But yes, you can do it. <laughs> just keep your baby wipes until they're just completely gray filled with silver. That's what I do. That way you're not burning a million baby wipes just to get a little tiny wipe of silver clay off of them. Okay, so what I've got here is a ceramic tile. This is just to protect my table, okay, because this is a plastic table. In my studio, I do this much more safely, of course. <laughs> I've got a fire brick. This is a vermiculite fire brick. Um, for metal clay torch firing, these are the best option. I find that they disperse the heat better. A soldering block is going to hold that heat under your piece, and you might accidentally melt it from the bottom without realizing it was going to happen. Okay. I've got a little bowl of water over here. I've got some tongs to hold my piece and quench it in my water, and I've got a butane torch, okay? This is, whoops, this is the little hottie butane torch. I, 
I like this one. There's, I've got, <laughs> I've got tons of torches, and they're all good for their own thing. <laughs> so this one is a pretty versatile one. I, I do like it. Um, so I use this one for a lot of things. For real fine work, sometimes I'll use a pointier flame, but this is because this is kind of a big nozzle on it. Okay. So let me turn this one light off just so you get a tiny bit better view here. And what we're going to do is start our torch. This piece is going to catch on fire first. Okay. I don't know if you can see that little bit. There we go. See how there's a little bit of flame you can see there? That was the binder burning off of the piece. And it's already gone. Okay. So now... Once the binder is burned off, you're going to bring your piece up to temperature. That's the temperature you're looking for right there. Now, I know that's so hard to see. And unfortunately, that is, you know, the way cameras are. What you're looking for is a really, really brilliant orange color. That's what you're looking for, okay? Once it is that color, you're going to leave it there for two minutes. You'll notice it, it has already shrunk a little bit. That is um, the metal sintering together. Let me see if I can show you while I'm holding that on there for two minutes. Let's see if I can safely get this in there. You see the difference in the size? Well, I'm about to melt it because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, let me back that off a little bit. Uh, Monica, no, I actually don't. This is one of the plain pieces. Um, I usually fire with the texture up. I find that the um, warping seems to be a little bit better. And also, if you do happen to push that melting point a little bit, then, you know, you're not, you're melting it from the bottom, generally. So the top will be hidden in that texture. So... I, I don't, I don't know how to explain that better besides saying if there's there was nothing wrong. Oh, hi, Anja. Um, there's nothing wrong with firing it texture side down, but there are a few little things that would help. So I usually do it texture side up. Okay. So you're going to go about two minutes, and I'm getting pretty close to that, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off just for time purposes. Okay, and you can see, before I move it, hopefully you can see that. See that edge right there has a little bit of uh, what looks like texture on it? I'll try to get in close, but I don't think the camera will get too close. Um, that's where I started to melt it as I was talking. <laughs> so, you want to be careful with that. So let me get this off here and quenched. Okay, and because I almost melted it, it's a very silvery color. Usually you'll see these come out much whiter, and with my next piece that I'm going to show you, you'll see what I mean by that. Um, normally metal clay is just going to come out very white, but I pushed the limits of the melting on it, so it, it's got a little bit of a shine to it. Okay, and that's how you know it's metal. <laughs> okay, probably seen a million of those demonstrations before, so I'm going to skip right to the next thing. Unless, it, does anybody have any questions about the firing? Nope. Okay, we're good then. So, what I'm going to do now... This is a fired piece that, oh, let me turn my light back on for you. Oh, trying to get that, there you go. This is a fired piece that is still white. You can see it doesn't have that shine to it like the metal piece does. Let's see if I put that next to it. See what I mean? Ooh, 
yeah see how shiny that other the silver one is so this piece is not polished this is what your metal clay will generally look like after you fire it okay I am going to show you a couple things um, because what I want to get to is the patina so I get a lot of questions about the polishing machine so I'm going to do a little bit of everything today for you on the polishing just a little bit normally and if you don't have a lot of tools really where you want to start is a soft brass brush okay that is actually important for fine silver fine silver is very very soft and if you use a hard brush on it like a hard metal brush brush a brass or a steel or anything you'll see that it very easily leaves gouges in your silver so this is much softer that will get the the we call it kiln patina but it's going to actually get um, the silver shining what we're doing is really burnishing the metal okay so I'm going to start on the back so that you can see it better there you go can you see the white okay and you do this underwater. I like to use a little soap with it as well. See how that works so easily? Okay. And you could do just that if you wanted to. Shine the sides a little bit. Shine the top. And if you wanted to, you could be done. <laughs> okay, so that's what I meant by if you don't have a lot of equipment, you could really do just that and be completely finished. Okay, I'm going to show you some more things though. <laughs> this is, oh, and I didn't use this because I wanted you to be able to see it better. This is a rubber block. Okay, I use this to do a lot of my polishing. You'll see this happen more when we do the final work after the patina. Okay, but you're going to use this to support your piece as you're working. Okay, okay, but the thing that I get tons of questions about is how to use the polishing motor. So let me see if I can raise this camera up a little bit for you. Maybe we go this way. Yeah. Okay, um, I get tons of questions about this, so I thought this would probably be something to, very helpful to demonstrate. This is just a mini polishing motor, okay, and these are called bristle discs. Each color is a different grit, just like sandpaper, okay. There's on the in like the sets that we use there's three discs on a hub okay so this little thing in the middle is called a spindle adapter or a spindle mount or a hub okay they just screw apart from side to side here and you put these discs onto them okay so when you do polishing with these you're going to start with the heaviest grit first and work your way down to the lightest grit. Okay, there's six grits. So let me show you what you do. These are there are tapered spindles on here. These things are actually tapered inside. Okay, I don't know if you can see that angle right there is about perfect. This end is bigger than this end. So you're gonna make sure that you put these on right. This is going to be your reference video <laughs> for this, or I should probably make another one for this, I suppose. The top, when you put it on, okay, the top of the bristles should point away from you, okay? I'm here, right? So the top of these bristles are pointing away from me, okay? I'm going to use this side of the mandrel to screw this one on. Now I'm going to put the other one on over here. Again, tapered end, bristles pointing away from me. Put it on and use this side to screw this one on. 
Okay, so now these two are both on there. Now, when you polish your piece, you hold it up on the bristles from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to push up here using my hands underneath it and my fingers. Okay, now here's another little trick. Can you all still hear me? Somebody let me know if you can hear me well enough with the motor running. Or if I need to speak louder, just let me know, okay? When you turn it on, the first thing that I do is just touch them. It doesn't hurt, okay? This won't hurt you. Now, if you keep your hand hard on it, it yeah, eventually you would like kind of burn your fingers, I suppose. But these are soft. They are not hard, okay? So what you want to do is, wonderful, thank you, okay, what you want to do is put your fingers under this piece and hold it into these bristles, up under these bristles, okay, just like that. And I'm again starting with the heaviest grit. <laughs> these are 3M radial bristle discs and remember you need the, the spindle mount adapters as well okay okay there's grit number one okay now I'm going to grit number two and I'm going to go a little faster now. Don't forget to do the sides of the earring because earrings, when they hang, you know, should twinkle a little bit. <laughs> okay. That was disc number two. Okay. Turn it back off. Unscrew these guys. Monica, that's a good question. You actually don't. If you just turn the mounts the other direction, they will work. Okay. Okay, my next two grits. Time is getting tight, so I'm going to go much faster so that I can get definitely get to the patina part for you, okay? Okay. Let's see, much, much, much shinier. And one more set. <laughs> Oops. I didn't have that one on there tight enough, of course. Okay. Just about perfect. And it's really simple. It's I find that I like that size polishing motor much better than using the like Dremel sized ones. They do make them in Dremel sized um, discs, but the little discs actually wear out very fast. The big discs don't wear out. So that's why, you know, investing in a set of these, these will last you five, six years easily versus the little ones, especially like anybody who's done this, 
the little green ones you go through <laughs> every couple months easily and they're and they're very expensive so investing in the larger ones really does save you a ton of money in the end um okay so we're gonna do the fun patina part before we run out of time because i do think this thing yeah it might not cut me off but <laughs> let's hope it doesn't okay the thing we're going to do i'm decided to go with coral um these are vintage patinas i i like them because they're a little more versatile you can get an opaque look or a uh, transparent look just depending on how you apply them so I do like I like using these for a lot of things I think we're gonna look at some other fun ones I think yeah I think this one might have even been like an alcohol ink so you can use a ton of different stuff for these um, I just happen to like these guys because they're very versatile so okay I'm gonna jump right into this so I don't run out of time <laughs> I'm going to shake this up really, really well. And this takes about a drop to do an earring this size. So I'm going to put two drops of this stuff in my thing here. It dries super, super fast. So you can't really um, let it sit in that container. So you don't want to use more than you need to. Okay? Have an extra paper towel ready for dobbing this off. Okay, and I need some glasses. Can you guys see this going up? Let's get back down in here a little bit. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is get some patina on my brush, kind of jam it down in there, and then dab it off immediately before it dries, okay? Video isn't working. You haven't, can you see me now? Hmm. I wonder what's going on here. Can you see me now, anybody? Can you see me now? Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's recording or not. Oh, good. Okay. Kim can see me. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, basically, that's where... Let me... I'll do the next one again for you. But basically... Oh, is that what happens? Oh. Okay. So maybe my internet is running slow. So I'll do it again. Um, and I'll try to do it a little slower so hopefully it catches um, each, each way I do it, okay? So what I did was I got some patina. Yes, you can definitely replay this later. Um, so... I'm going to do it again, so I'm hoping that it catches it this time because it may not even be recording it. So hopefully I'm catching it, okay? About two drops of patina in there. Get a bunch on here. Dab it deep into those recesses. And immediately dab it off. 
okay again I said put a bunch of patina on there dab it deep into the recesses and then immediately dab it off okay hopefully everything was clear